Okay, <clears throat> this video is about Maxwell Maltz, Psychology Hero number four. I'm going through all my psychology stuff right now, and I remember I have very fond memories of Maxwell Maltz. He lived from 1889 to 1975. He was a plastic surgeon, and he had noticed that some of his patients would get great results, and other ones would get lousy results, and there wasn't a clear medical anatomical reason why. And he studied this, and over time he noticed that it was the attitude of the patient. Like, let's say you have a woman who needs plastic surgery, and then she says, I have to get home, you know, in two days because i got to take care of my kids. She's really motivated. She will do great, and she'll be out of the hospital in two days, and she's fine. Whereas a, a person who doesn't have a clear sense of their goals might sit around and, oh, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, you know, I need medicine for the pain, then I'm constipated. They don't get out of bed. They get a DVT, pulmonary embolism, all kinds of problems. And... You know, Maxwell Maltz to his day or from the 1950s, 1960s is a little bit like what Brian Tracy is today, sort of a motivational coach type of guy. I also became interested in him because when I was at Stanford, there were other guys there who were all Americans, national champions, and they were reading Maltz and he was getting them psyched up. It was a common thing amongst top notch uh, national caliber athletes to read Maltz. And I had also noticed there were some guys from other teams, I saw this in high school and college, who didn't really have that much athletic ability, but they expected to win, and they were pretty good. Um, the other thing, too, is I started hanging around with some guys that were really good students, especially when I met this one guy at Stanford who was, I was afraid I was going to flunk out when I first started. You know, my parents were foreigners, didn't know America. In high school, I never took honors classes. And I got recruited as an athlete to Stanford, and I really wasn't academically prepared that well. So when I got to hang around with this guy who had gotten A-pluses um, in some tough classes, just to be around them, you see their attitude. You know, Instead of walking in the room afraid you're going to flunk out like I was at that time, they walked into the room expecting to get an A or get an A-plus, maybe be the best student in the class. So whatever you do as a as a area of endeavor, sport, or academics, you want to get around the best people because it makes you start comparing yourself to them, saying, why can't I be like that? And once you get that self-image, you just push yourself to achieve at a higher level. Uh, Maxwell Maltz's famous book was called Psycho-Cybernetics. Psycho means the mind. Cybernetics means to drive. It's like a Greek word, like drive a boat, drive your mind, and to be in control of your life more. And... Um, He's, there's some videos of him on the internet, and you'll see he's a good, nice guy. He's a little, like I said, Brian Tracy, old school guy, and almost seems kind of simple now, but at the time, it was a positive step forward. It also reminds me of Carol Dweck, the psychologist from Stanford, the idea of a growth mindset. Realize that you can pr improve, and Malt says, make a goal every day and just keep trying to get a little better every day and project, project yourself into the future. Imagine it, how good you could be, and it'll give you the energy to push through in that achievement. Okay, so here's a typical quote from Maxwell Maltz. Our self-image, strongly held, essentially, essentially determines what we become. The self-image is the key to human personality and behavior. If you change the self-image, you will change the personality and behavior of that person. So that's the thing, too. If you're a parent or a coach, you want the student, the child, the athlete to develop a high self-esteem. I mean, of course, they have to earn it. They have to do the work. But there's also a way of thinking. You know, like a typical example is, you know, Mark Schultz, the World and Olympic champion, my wrestling coach at Stanford. He was hanging around with Gene Mills, who set records for pinning um, the national collegiate record. And they were in Russia wrestling in a big tournament, Tbilisi. And the Americans, you know, Russia was better at that time. And, you know, some of the Americans were almost scared to wrestle the Russians. And so anyways, so uh, Gene Mills had to wrestle this like world champion named Shagaev. And, you know, Mark asked him, how do you think you're going to do against Shagaev? And he's like, I'm going to kick the shit out of Shagaev. And the reason I bring that up is Gene Mills went out and he beat the crap out of this guy who was a former world champion. And so I say that because that's the attitude of guys who become great is they say, why can't I be the best? Why shouldn't I be the best? And then they push towards it. You know, each day getting better. So that really helped me. As soon as I started hanging around the guy who was getting A pluses, I figured out how to get an A just from imitating him in a sense. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, you want to set your goals high. Even if you fail, if you got a high goal, you'll still probably do pretty well. And that works for sports or academics. Okay. 
So more Maxwell Maltz quotes here. To change a habit, make a conscious decision, and then act out the new behavior. It typically takes about 21 days to change a new habit. Self-esteem is as necessary to the spirit as food is to the body. Self-image sets the boundaries of individual accomplishment. A human being always acts and feels and performs in accordance with what he imagines to be true about himself and his environment. Every day we must have a goal and we need that goal to make the day count for something. Get yourself a goal worth working for. Better still, get yourself a project. Maxwell Maltz quotes. And I know that's true. Like a lot of doctors, you have to work really intensely. And you're kind of like an educated assembly line factory worker, okay? And if you only make it your goal to get through the day as fast as possible, you're probably not going to learn that much. And over time, you'll start going downhill. But if you say to yourself each day, yes, I got to do all this work. But whenever something interesting comes up, I'm going to look it up on the internet or in a book so that I keep on learning. And you might go home an hour late that day, hour and a half late because you spent time reading and studying. Or you'll call a friend who's an expert in the subject and ask him to explain it to you. But you're constantly getting better every day. And over time, you get a lot better. And you get this strong sense of competence and, and uh, excellence. And that's a good feeling. It's worth it. Um, Maxwell Maltz continues. Um, Self-improvement is the name of the game, and your primary objective is to strengthen yourself. You will act like the sort of person you believe yourself to be. If you think that you are smart, then you will work to prove that you are smart. That is very true. If you want to prove you're smart, and you're going to be in a lot of situations <clears throat> uh, where people want to insult you or put you down, um, then... It will energize you, okay? Um, I've had plenty of times where people insulted me or put me down, and I was like, fine, go ahead. You will see. Just watch me. You will see how good I am. And I would work hard anyways, but I would work extra hard just to prove that I could achieve whatever um, it was at the time. Like I had one, um, <clears throat> one uh, doctor insulted me at the beginning of my radiology residency. And he's like, oh, we got a Puerto Rican. I better watch my hubcaps in the parking lot, you know, and like – kind of, you know, gave me this joke, oh, how'd you get in? Affirmative action. And I was like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, you know what, pal? You just wait. I will be the best pro, I will be the best resident in this entire program. You will see. Okay. And um, anyways, that type of attitude, it helps. Okay. Imagination sets the goal picture, which our automatic mechanism works on. We will act or fail to act, not because of will, as is so commonly believed, but because of imagination. And that's another thing too. You want to be around people who are successful and motivated because you start to think like they do. Um, like I said, I was around the guy who was getting A pluses and I started to believe I could get an A. Then I started hanging around with the Schultz brothers, you know, the world and Olympic champions. And I went from, you know, just hoping I'd be 500 to, you know, setting record for wins, you know, at Stanford, 39 in the season. I wish I had I was scared of the Schultz brothers my first two years of wrestling, so I didn't talk to them much. But then I was kind of desperate in the spring of my sophomore year, so then I went to ask them for help. And, man, I got better faster. So you could find those role models as fast as you can and ask them to help you or just study them, and you'll get better a lot faster. Maxwell Maltz continues. Because you got to be able to envision the goal in order to achieve it. Close scrutiny will show that most crisis situations are opportunities to either advance or to stay where you are. Once you give your brain a goal to achieve, you can depend upon its automatic guidance system to take you to that goal. Maxwell Malt. Yeah, write it down, put it on a piece of paper, tape it to the mirror in your bathroom, focus your energy on getting that goal and work your tail off to get it, and you magnify what you're capable of doing. I Also, I know like when I'm interested in a subject, I'm, let's say I'm trying to figure out the biochemistry of diabetes, I just get myself obsessed with diabetes for a couple of months and then I get all this energy to study it. You have to have that obsession. You, you can't do f five different things or you just dilute your energy. you got to focus your energy on a task. And, Anyways, Maxwell Maltz helps self-image. He's a lot like Brian Tracy. Uh, 